Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be going through my super easy budgeting method using Google Sheets. This is the method I've been using since 2016 and it really is super easy, super straightforward. And I really like Google Sheets because it's available on any device that I log into. It's very simple to set up and if you already have a Google account, you are probably already familiar with Sheets. But today I'm just gonna be going through how I set up that budget tracker. After I posted my debt journey video, a bunch of you reached out and asked if I could share the template that I use for um, my expense tracker in Google Sheets. And unfortunately, you can't really share your Google account or you have to give permission to each individual per person. So I thought it'd be easier just to do a quick video showing you guys exactly how I set it up. So I'm gonna pull up Google Sheets now. And we'll go through the setup together. If you already have a Google account, it's very easy to make a sheet. You just log in and you go up to the upper left hand corner here to this little Google Apps grid. Click on that and scroll down until you see Sheets and that will bring you here. As you can see, I already have a bunch of them, but if you go down to the bottom left hand corner onto this colorful plus sign, you just click on that to create a new spreadsheet. And that will bring you up a blank spreadsheet just like this. So I actually have my expenses pulled up over here, just a reference, I don't wanna forget anything. So as you can see, I have been using this system since 2016 and I just have a new sheet for every year cause that's how it makes sense for me. Certainly I know other people who use this uh, program have sometimes multiple sheets going on, but I just like to keep it clean, keep it one per year and um, as you can see, it looks relatively the same year after year. It just gets shorter, which is good. If you watch my debt journey video, then you know um, kind of the process that I've gone through to get it from looking like this to looking like this, which is a drastic improvement, but that's okay. We all get to start somewhere. So as you can see, I like to keep things color coded because that just is aesthetically pleasing for me. So let's go over to our blank spreadsheet. And in this first column is just where I have all of my debt listed. So what you wanna do before you start building this spreadsheet is you wanna make sure you have every single monthly payment and debt that you have listed out. And that's everything, you know, rent or mortgage, car payment, credit cards, medical bills, even things like Netflix, Disney Hulu, Disney Plus or Hulu, it doesn't matter how big or small the monthly debt, I would list out absolutely everything. And then I would put that on the spreadsheet in order of due date. So let's just start here. So in the first column, this is where I have the debt totals. So I just label that total in the next column which is the B column I just put day so that's the day of the month that the bills are gonna be due in the third column C that's the lender or whoever I owe the debt to and then D that's just the amount and that is gonna be like what what is my monthly payment and then going across starting in the E column that's where I start listing out the months of the year and I won't list them all out now, but you get the gist. Okay, so looking at your list of bills, you're gonna put in the first one that's due every month. So for me, on the first, I have rent due every month. It's due on the first, and gosh, I do that wrong every time. <laughs> okay, so the quote unquote lender in this case is just rent and I pay $1,000 a month. And so in the total, that very first column, there is no a debt associated with my rent. It's just a recurring monthly payment. So anything that doesn't have a debt associated with it, associated with it I just put NA. Um, let's just say I have a credit card that has $2,358 on it, and that is due on the third of the month. The lender would be credit card and you can label it to the specific credit card, whatever you wanna do there. 
let's say that has a minimum monthly payment of $75. Um, let's say the next bill that I have is a medical bill and let's say I owe $784. Put that there and that's due on the fifth of every month. Medical and that has a minimum monthly payment of $25 a month. Let's say my next item is Netflix. Well, that doesn't have any debt associated with it. It's just an automatic monthly payment and that's due on the 17th. And I think mine's like $17.94 or some, something. Um, let's say my cell phone bill is due on the 28th of every month. And etc. you get the point. $60 a month, sure. So once you have everything listed out by day of the month, um, now it doesn't look very pretty at this moment. Again, I like everything to look pretty. So let's say like some of the items in the first column are left oriented, some are right oriented. So you can highlight that whole column and come over here and make everything left oriented if you want or right oriented, it doesn't matter, whatever you wanna do. And then um, you can continue that with any rows, doesn't matter. I actually like my amounts right oriented, so I'm gonna fix that. I mean, excuse me, left oriented. Now, I also like to have my header row bold and I like to put a bottom border on it just because I think it looks a little neater. So once you get everything listed out, I like to have the totals at the bottom, both the total for the debt column and the total for the amount owed every month column. So you just click in this box right below your last bill and then you just hit the equal sign and then it's gonna automatically suggest a couple things in this this top formula right here. So this is suggesting a formula, sum, which is the total of box A2 through A6, which is exactly what we want. That's, those are the exact boxes that cover the total amounts um, that we have for all of our expenses. So that, that's exactly what we want. So you can just go ahead and click right on that. And then, so it'll populate that box with the formula and then you can just hit enter. And that will give you, right now it's just showing 3,142, but if you click back up to it and you click here on the dollar sign, as you can see, just hovering over it, it says format as a currency, which is what you want. So you can just click that and it automatically puts that box into dollar format. And so that's your total for this whole row. And it automatically knows to not that you know, it recognizes the NA as that's not a dollar amount. So it just ignores those boxes altogether. And even if your expenses change over time, like say you end up paying off this medical bill and you just delete that whole row, it'll just automatically move everything up and recalculate based on everything that's left in that column. <clears throat> and same as if you need to insert something, you can just um, right click on this or even just drag this guy down a row and then you can go ahead and fill it in um, and it'll just automatically add the new box to this formula so it'll just keep going so say suddenly I now have another $432 credit card it'll just automatically add it and update that amount right there and say that's due on the 29th <clears throat> and then you can do the same thing with, whoops, fix that guy. You can do the same thing with your total monthly bills. So you can just hit that equal sign and automatically it'll suggest that you would like to add up uh, rows or box D2 through D7, which is the case. You can just click that, hit enter, and it automatically adds those up. Fix your alignment. And then what I like to do is also add a border to my totals row. And so I do a top border for that. So it just makes it look a little nicer. And you can play around with the colors. Like as you can see back over on my spreadsheets, <clears throat> I just like to have pink for the totals, 
orange for the day, a light blue for the lender, and then green for the amount. But you can, you can do whatever you want. You can just highlight all of those and then go here to the paint color. Um, you can pick one of the colors suggested or you can make a custom color. You know, do whatever you want, set it up however you like. And as you can see, like this box doesn't have to be so wide. Um, so for example, back over in my spreadsheets, I have, well, 2016 is not a good example, but 2017, January through December, back on our spreadsheet here, that would probably run off the end of the page. So, and it just looks a little nicer to kind of bring everything in. And so you can manually drag and drop these, or if you just highlight, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that center divider between those two columns, and double click it, it'll automatically shrink it down to perfectly fit the whatever's the longest item you have in that box. So it just kind of pulls everything in, makes it look a little neater. So like I mentioned before, I like Google Sheets because it's accessible on any device that I want to log in from. I can edit it at any time and it's automatically updated no matter where I log in. And it's just a really handy tool to have in your arsenal when it comes to tracking your expenses. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Let me know in the comments what tools you use to track your expenses and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Oh, <sighs>